And I'm back, and it's all finished. The Dreadnought, and I've got a Rhea to sell, but the Dreadnought and the Carrier are finished. So I'm just going to deliver those. And I'll just show you, I'm in Hent right now, which is just one jump out of the uh, system where those carriers have just been built. And I've been looking at Altsela here, and other than this two ship destroyed thing down here, um, it looks to be quiet, but we'll find out when we get in there. Average pilots in the space, there's one. Uh, ships destroyed is two. There's no pods. Number of pilots currently docked, nothing. So I don't know what that was. If, But I also don't know exactly what ships destroyed mean, because it... I, it certainly doesn't mean NPCs, uh, but so it must be player ships. Um, so, anyways, I'll just go in there and see what's in there, and before, uh, and then decide whether I want to send out the uh, carriers and all that. Because I did want to, I did want to show you flying them, but I'll just uh, look to see who's in local before I do that. But what I am going to do is I was going to set up a. Uh, when you're flying in space like I'm doing right now, you can click, you can set up a bookmark right here and you can create a bookmark out in the middle of nowhere and then you can warp to that bookmark. So what I was going to do is while I was flying to the station in Otsella, I was going to create a bookmark and then warp to that spot with the dreadnought and then there's no problem about people trying to come and get me because it would take them probably five minutes at least to, to scan me down, even if only if they were sitting there waiting to scan me down. And I just I would just warp to it and then leave. So, by the way, I'm also just in a scout ship. I'm not even in a cloak ship because the only way I would get caught even in something like this, because this is a really fast ship, I, they would have to have a gate camp. So I'm not worried about it. This thing warps in half a second, so there's. I'm untouchable unless they had a gate camp. So here's Otsela. There's only two people in local. Let's just check them out because I, I haven't done that in the other videos and I should show you doing that. So if you want to look at people, you just click on them. She'll go show info. Notice this guy has just an NPC corp. He's only only for a day. How about his employment history? He's got none. Oh, look, this guy's old. This is an old character. It's a couple of years. All kinds of different random looks like NPC but some also player this guy's probably an alt and then how about this guy um, okay he's in a corp another thing that's important to look at is the uh, sec rating if a person is continually attacking someone and uh, other players in low sec or high sec they'll get a sec uh, sec rating penalty and usually that'll be in the negatives um, but for those two, they're positive. Now, you can, I believe this is the case, you can do all the PvPing you want in zero sec, and there's no sec penalties for fighting people in zero sec. But there is penalties for fighting people in low sec and high sec, and that's where you get the sec rating hit. And that's when people can click on you and go, oh, look, this guy's obviously a pirate. Another indication of a pirate is someone with a bounty, but depending on the size of the bounty, it might just be a joke that their friends put on them. So, Anyways, right now, Atsala is very quiet. There's just two guys sitting in here. They, they're not pirates. They're not like, you don't see the big wanted name, wanted label on their heads. So it doesn't look like a big deal. So we can do this then. We can get this on. I was afraid that this would be a bad day, but it's not. Okay, so on the first, I'm going to do, just quickly, I'm going to take them out. I'm going to warp them to that little spot that I, uh, oops, okay. And then I'm going to, um, then I'm going to, what, what was I saying? Uh, for some reason the music was screwing up there, I don't know why. So here, anyways, here's Thanatos. Uh, this is a carrier, so you'd load up loaded up with, uh, um, what are they called, fighters, I think. You load them up with fighter drones, and then you sit there in your fleet, and, and you send them out and attack stuff with it. So there's a Thanatos. Isn't that, that's pretty sweet, eh? Pretty, uh, pretty large ship. Oh, look at all that. 
Look at all these little things. This is a new a new change in Eve. So let's warp to my little spot here. What's this one? Hopefully it's not on the other side of the, uh, of the station. Let's see how long I have to align. Maybe not, because I don't want to have to uh, f uh, fly through the station. Just be a slow warp. Looks like it's okay. And yeah, this is pretty much a, a fleet, a fleet gangbanger. You know, it, it, it's un. I should I say it's unfortunate. Well, it, it's in this game. It's not really the case that the bigger the ship, you just become more and more of like a pwn mobile, like in other games. The better, the bigger, the, the bigger guns or whatever you get, the more advanced stuff you get. It means that you kill everybody else below you. Not the case, really. If I took this carrier into a belt and attacked some frigates or cruisers or something, first of all, I'd have a hell of a time hitting them. Uh, but second of all, it would just be such a waste of time. It's not really the case. It's more the case that I can, I could wipe out a lot of battle cruisers with, with this thing. Um, another carrier would take a while to kill, and it would pretty much be a battle of gear and skills. Um, but... Uh, and um, yeah, so it's it's not really like that in this game. It's it's a little bit too bad because I guess like consider World of Warcraft, you're better geared, you're higher, more higher leveled, you pwn everyone below you. That's the, certainly the case if you're a hunter, which I was. I pwned everyone below me. Hunters were the, I think the best PvP class. I didn't have difficulties with anybody, any class. Didn't matter what they were. Except those damn gnomes. They, they really annoyed me. But anyways, uh, not so in this game. Uh, ships battle ships of the same of the similar power and type. You can't just get a big ship and then pwn everybody below you. If I toured around with this thing, eventually I'd probably get caught by somebody and they'd beat me down. They'd get a fleet together and, and just annoy me. And it would, that's pretty much how the day would end. Uh, I'm just going to check out this dude here that just entered the system. Okay, he's got a bounty of 100,000. Uh, he's been in a corp for three years. No sec rating. I always wonder whether people uh, monitor their sec, whether they um, they do a bit of PvP and get a negative sec, and then they go do some missions, because missions give you sec increases. I wonder whether people monitor it, but it would seem to me like a big waste of time to do that. It would just take so long. Anyways, there's the Thanatos. How about the uh, Dreadnought here? And not uh, there we go so <laughs> they get bigger <laughs> there's a dreadnought it's pretty friggin huge uh, bigger than the carrier let's take this thing out so the dreadnought the dreadnoughts are pretty much fleet battled only I would have even a worse time if I took this thing out to some uh, uh, if I went on a tour with this thing, I'd have an even worse time trying to kill people because trying to blow up other people's ships because this thing has a really bad uh, hit hit uh, percent. Uh, pretty much the, the only thing you use these things for are hitting uh, structures, uh, POSs. They're pretty much, if you consider like uh, uh, warfare in the real world, these things will be siege engines. They're not uh, armies. This is a catapult. Catapults are, are completely are just crap unless you can protect them and let them lob continuously. Uh, these things have a special what's called siege mode that you can enter into and you need fuel and all that. And then you can enter siege mode and then what you do is they, they can't move for I don't know how long and they're, they can't be jammed. Um, which means they can't lose their target. You can use these little modules that make it so your ship loses. Uh, uh, you can jam someone so there's target. They lose their target and they can't shoot anybody for a little while. In siege mode, these these things can. They can't be jammed. And then uh, they just they do a crap load of damage when they're in siege mode. But pretty much what happens is the tracking speed of the guns goes to near zero, which means if the thing is moving at all then it won't hit it. So um, what happens is uh, you pretty much only can hit uh, 
Oh, that's strange. Someone's in reinforced mode? What the heck is that? I don't know if that's, uh... That's all. I don't know what that is. Um... So pretty much you use these things to knock down player on stations. You put them in siege mode and they do a lot of damage. And yeah, that's the purpose of these things. But they're pretty damn big. Uh, this baby will sell for about 2 bill, I think. And the other one that the carrier is about 800 mil. Not, uh, maybe more, I'm not sure now. But I'll show you now. Now I'll sell them. I'll do that bit. And see, so you can see the final. You can see the building of the components. The building of the thing, I take it out for a spin, and then I'll, you see me sell it or put it up for sale. And I'll show you a technique I do that it kind of um, makes the makes it a more um, attractive sale, a little bit of a practical um, addition to uh, to it, so it sells easier. So I'll go on a contract because oh well, you can sell them on the market, but I don't do that, and I'll show you why. So uh, let's look up uh, Revelations. So I'll go find and contract, and I'll just do all regions. That's fine. So there's there's all the Revelations that are up in the game for the public, anyways. There they are, about three bill or so. Someone, or if you want to, you can take a Revelation to this system, hop a something, and this hop a something, and uh, the guy will give you five mil for it. How isn't that nice? Yeah, that sounds like a great deal. Um, so here's a bunch of ones for sale. Domain, is the, the red is the region. Uh, two bill, two and a half, whatever. Uh, here's some low sec. This one's certainly low sec. What I do when I uh, sell these is I add fuel. And the fuel I add is the jump fuel because the main way of moving these kinds of these capital ships around is with jump uh, jump drives and what jump drives are is what people do is they take a frigate or something some kind of crappy ship and they put a sino field generator on them which is a skill you can look it up and what it does these are low sec and zero sec only and what it does is it puts a warp beacon out in a system and the frigate I had to do this once because I once took a carrier to some system I had a buddy fly I think it was a Thanatos actually I couldn't fly the Thanatos at the time, so I had a buddy fly the Thanatos, and I flew a frigate, and I made all the Sinos for him. He jumped each one. What happens is you put like a, it's like a white glowing ball in a system. Everyone can see it, by the way. So you're a target, so you want to pick systems that have little, not very many people in them. When the Sino field is active, you're, I think it's a minimum of five minutes or something, or ten minutes. You're a sitting duck as the frigate. People can come and blow you up. You can't move. Um, but what you do is the, depending on the skill, your skill, I think is a jump drive skill. If you're in a fleet with another person that has a jump drive, drivable ship, so a carrier, dreadnought, um, a, uh, the jump, free, uh, jump freighters, like the Reyes, what they can do is they can jump to you and they can jump like eight jumps, like eight systems. It would take them normally eight, uh, eight systems to get all the way to you. You instead can do one Sino, and it, or you'll jump a, ahead eight, eight systems. And you do that. You just keep hopping like that. Uh, so that's what I did once to sell one. Because I believe these guys can't use uh, the Stargates. I don't think I can jump with this thing through a Stargate. Uh, you can with a jump freighter. You can with the Ray and all that. You can use the Stargate still. But I believe these two you can't, and, and, and above. So the mother ships, which are even bigger carriers, they can't use the Stargates. And then, of course, the Titans can't use the Stargates either. Uh, so anyway, so uh, why I was talking about it, all this. So what I do to sell these things, make them more more attractive sale, is I combine them with the fuel that they require to jump. Let me just get out of them for a second here. And, uh, uh, yeah, let me just, uh, so let's do the revelation first. The revelation takes helium isotopes for its jump drive. And I don't know if anyone else has one. Here's, here's a guy who's got some helium isotopes. Now, I thought I put a full tank of gas in. Let me see. I thought I did 50K. Oh, there's, okay, there's 80. Maybe I did 20,000? I'll do 20,000, I guess. 20,000 helium isotopes I'll put with the, with the dreadnought. 
So I'm just going to uh, split this first. See, how did I do that before? Was it shift? There we go. You actually can do that splitting even in the contract. You can split stuff w um, and you, even when you're not in the system, not in the station. You can split stuff, which is kind of nice because then I could build one of these and I could still be way over in Jitta and I could set up the order. I could split the, uh, the isotope pile. So I'll go create, contract, public, I used to actually do auctions, but I'm not going to do that stuff anymore. I used to do auctions, and I used to do five mail buy, the, f the minimum order and all that, but forget it. I'm not going to do that anymore. So here's helium. We want the 20,000 one. Okay, price. What does 20,000 helium go these days? So let's say 610. So what's that, 12 mil? Yeah, that's 12 mil, okay. So, let's say the base price of the Dreadnought is about, well, I guess it's about 265. You know, I actually have been able to get more because it's in the Forge region. I've been able to get more money. Look, how many other people are in the Forge region? Nobody. I've actually been able to get a premium, so how about we do that? How about we do 2.8? And then we'll add a little bit for the fuel. So how about 2.9? Is that too much? Uh, let's do... I'll do 2.85. I'll do 2.84. That's a lot of zeros. Actually, I think I did... Oh, yeah, that's right. Actually, let me see. What is a full tank of gas? for this. Revelation holds what? Revelation will hold where's the fuel? 8,000. This is 0.15 Okay, so what would that be? Fifty thousand, fifty-three thousand. So I'm giving them what, a third of a tank, I guess. There, put that in. Okay. So I'm selling. Revelation, helium isotopes, for two point eight four. That's fine. And all those taxes and whatever. Okay. Okay, that one's done. And then the Thanatos. So Thanatos, same thing. It has a jump drive. It takes oxygen isotopes. And so we'll see what the prices are. For Thannies. Than Look at all the Thannies that are up. There's tons. Tons of them up. Anybody in the Forge? Nope. Okay, so I'll have a premium. And... There's some oxygen isotopes. Actually, the guy has it in the uh, in the ship. When it's indented like that, it means that it's fitted, or it's in the ship, in the cargo, for example. I don't need to do that though. Um, I used to do uh, how much how much oxygen isotopes do I have? I have 140,000. What did I do? I haven't done this in such a while. I haven't sold it. I used to sell these stuff, this stuff pretty regularly, but now I forget the numbers. I forget how many I used to give them. Uh, let's see, 3,000. I imagine it's the same. Yeah. So what is that? 40? No. Must be four, uh, 30 or something. Was it 3,000? 45. 45 thou. I didn't give him that much. That can't be right. Oh, 20. Okay. Oh, so I did, I would give them a full tank of gas. Okay, so we'll do that. So we'll go create item. I'll show you splitting the isotopes this time. So you just right click on it and go split. So you go 20,000 or whatever you want. And then it'll appear here. 
It's pretty helpful if you're not in this in the station. Okay, and what was the price going to be? So what was 20,000 worth? Oops. Okay. Twelve mil. Okay. What's this guy got? Oh yeah, a bunch of rigs and stuff. All right. How about? Uh, I'll do one four three, I guess. One four three, uh, because of fuel, and because of actually consider that I. This is twelve mil. Is only here one two right here. It's not even on the four, so I'm really adding a premium just because it's in the fours. How about I'll do a little lower? I'll do one three. I'll do one three eight. That's a hundred and that's about a hundred mil premium because it's in the forge. So I'll do one three eight. Okay, that's it uh, from start to finish of Dreadnoughts and Carriers. And you got to see them. You got to see me take them out for a spin. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, if you've been following my videos for a while, you will know that I'm not a PvP or a warmongering specialist in this game. I am an industrialist. I'm a builder. I'm a money maker. So I can't really tell you about fleet strategies and how the dreadnoughts and carriers are used specifically and all that all i can tell you is how to make them how to safely pilot low sack and not get yourself killed all that kind of stuff so if you have any of those kinds of questions i'd be happy to uh, answer them